fucking give me that bullshit about your reputation. Fucking your reputation? Your reputation doesn't mean shit. Doesn't mean shit unless you've dealt with me directly. Then I know who you are by what you do. By what you represent. Your reputation is skin deep, paper thin. They could be poked, tore down, and burnt. Give a fuck. <laughs> These cats who said, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? Do you, or even worse, do you know of who my father is? Fucking, if it ain't coming from you directly, I give a fuck. I give a fuck about it. Your reputation doesn't mean shit. My reputation doesn't mean shit. Just because your reputation doesn't mean shit doesn't mean my reputation matters. Nah. Reputations in themselves... Do not mean fuck. Do not mean anything past just word of mouth. Yeah, it'll assist. It'll provide some evidence of who you are. It might put somebody on notice that you're coming through. What you represent. Your, your mission is on its way to them. <laughs> right? Might give them a little foreshadowing of what their future looks like. But even then, you, you got to come in and play the part. You have to come in and commit. You have to live up to your reputation. If not, I, your reputation could, could paint you as a goddamn monster. But if I pull your bitch card, you think my gun gives a fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you think you think my gun gives a fuck, bro? <laughs> my gun gets off on me finger fucking it. <laughs> That's all my gun wants. <laughs> gives a fuck if I'm <laughs> Oh shit. Skin deep. Paper thin. That's all it that matters in corporate. Incorporate, it's your name. It, it's, it's the name you go by. Folks who know Alex, know what Alex is about. Folks who don't know Alex, give two fucks about Alex. Who the fuck is Alex? My name is Alex. I'm your host for the Corporate Cowboys podcast. This is another episode. Today is Wednesday, March 17th. 2021 it's a day like any other really a day in the life of a corporate cowboy powered by incorporating associates it's not that hard simple really simple really the more associates you incorporate the larger your network the more the more <clears throat> quote unquote clout you might have and and your reputation might spread the more associates you get the more associates you incorporate hence incorporating associates you got to live up to your namesake otherwise <laughs> otherwise what the fuck good is your reputation <laughs> oh man That's the point of uh, today's episode. What is skin deep and paper thin? And this goes beyond individuals. F fucking forget individuals. I'm talking whole organizations, whole companies, whole corporations. So when you're running in and out of corporations, you have to understand that you are necessarily running in and out of their reputations also when somebody says hey i represent blank and blank um see i don't even want to implicate i don't want to implicate a corporation because corporations in theory in theory are um are perfectly designed operations machines well-oiled 
on blood money. You think I want to fuck with that and ruin my opportunities in the future? Come on. Fucking come on. There are some individuals inside of very prestigious organizations, though, that do not live up to their namesake. And, I mean, it's organiz... It's... <laughs> Hold on. It's... Uh -uh. Why? Well, I guess you could dissolve both individuals and organizations. Just talk to the partners south of the border. But it's individuals you want to take care of. The organizations take care of themselves, necessarily. That's why they got operating agreements. That's why they got articles of incorporation. That's why they got charters and bylaws. That's why they got rules. Rules provide a semblance, a semblance of predictability, a semblance of principle, a set of principles to follow. If not, what the fuck good is your name? What the fuck good is the prestige your name carries? It's like your reputation. It would not mean shit. Somebody throws me this blue chip name and I'm supposed to what? Wet myself? Cream my pants? Get, <laughs> get hot and bothered about it? <laughs> you haven't dealt with me directly, right? Though if they approach me directly, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to, as a consummate professional, take them at face value. And you might say, Alex, that's mighty, mighty naive of you. That's mighty innocent of you. But I would challenge you. I would challenge you to take somebody at face value to allow them that trust, allow them that confidence, allow them to pitch you and sell you on something. Obviously, you want to inform yourself this one individual isn't going to be your sole source for information. That's how you get fucked. You wanna verify the information you're getting, you wanna investigate discover for yourself what the true meaning behind a person's reputation is, behind a person's name, behind a person's mission statement. Damn. Because a person represents an organization, always. Any individual you come across, any person, any human, you see, I was, I'm saying persons, like legal persons, right? Any organization, any corporation, any company, any individual that you come across is the first point of representation. They essentially become your point of contact into their network. Whether their network is a ragtag team of corporate hitters, fucking, I don't know, corporate cowboys or something. Or if it's some sort of regimented, consolidated organization with rank and file and a blue chip name to boot <laughs> as a kicker. <laughs> They're going to be your point of contact. I've seen... I've experienced... I've shared experiences with individuals in the street, much more professional, with the reputation to match. And others coming from blue chip names who weren't worth the time and um, weren't worth the cost at that. Because that shit is skin deep. It's paper thin. It's on a case-by-case -case basis. You can only hide behind your umbrella identity for so long. See, notice how I moved from names of prestige to now identities for clout, social identities for prestige, social identities for credit. 
<laughs> I could do a whole nother episode on just living on credit. Living on social credit. That'll be another episode. I don't know, maybe I'll blend it. But your identity, paper thin. Skin deep. It ends, it ends literally as soon as you open your mouth and communicate what it is you have inside, inside of your mind. Why? Because for some, it'll corroborate their ideas, their opinions about you. For some, it'll corroborate your reputation, what they've heard about you. And still others... It'll be the first time they even interact with you. They meet you. It'll be the first time you are introduced into their life. Whether you took the first step or they did. Typically, whoever takes the initiative um, controls the flow of interaction. I'm not going to say has the power because, I mean, you could strike first and fall. <laughs> you could strike first and fall second. You feel me? <laughs> if we're talking about spaces and time, you could strike first and fall second. I, I fucking, I've seen it. <laughs> this shit's a sight to, it's a sight to witness, man. It's a, it's a sight to see. The person who takes the initiative controls the flow of the interaction. Why? Because that's how you take control of the information of your reputation. That's how they'll come to recognize you. That's how folks will grow to recognize you, how your reputation develops. They'll know that if you take the initiative, again, doesn't mean that you strike first, that you extend your hand first, that you're the first to fucking shake hands and introduce yourself. Just taking the initiative. Taking the initiative. Taking the initiative on pushing the mission forward. Taking the initiative on asserting yourself. Now you could you could make a reputation of shitting on other people's reputations. And when I say when I say shitting on other people's reputations, it's like I mentioned earlier, just just pulling people's bitch cards. Just that could be your reputation, right? And I'm not gonna lie, every now and then I, I dabble in a little bit of that because it keeps you on your toes. And if you have a circle of associates, a circle of friends, if you will, where you're comfortable with <clears throat> constructive criticism where if you're comfortable capping on one another bagging on each other pulling each other's bitch cards you grow to improve your circle of trust you grow to improve your ability to converse to discuss to highlight and identify Problems, social problems, interpersonal problems, just issues that you can help your associates improve on and build and change for the better. If somebody has a stutter, you don't think we're going to fucking cap on them for that stutter? Why? Because it makes them a better person. It makes them a better person. We're not just going to tell them they're a piece of shit. We're going to tell them how they can stop being a piece of shit. And I mean, granted, it takes a little bit of, um, <laughs> not a little bit, it takes, it takes fucking surgical precision in order to highlight and identify somebody's social issue. Would you be surprised to learn that I had a stutter before? Yeah. Nothing crazy like, never mind. <laughs> but I did. How did I get over it? I identified what the source of the issue was. I highlighted it. 
and I isolated it in order to overcome the issue. But I think it was a, I think it was a complex. Ultimately, that's what it comes down to. When you when you pull people's bitch cards, when you pull people's cards, essentially calling their bluffs, right? You have them recapacitate, take a fucking step back, and see how they're uh, how they're coming at at you, how they're presenting themselves incorrectly onto the world. It takes a while to grow this sense of judgment, to develop this sense of judgment where you can do so effectively and be respected for it, where your, where your opinion is respected and taken as valid advice. And that comes with time. That comes with confidence. That comes with engendering trust in your circle of associates. That comes with building rapport. It's constant rapport building, even within your circle of associates. It's a constant buying and selling of influence, of influence. You're not actually trading money for advice unless it's somebody outside of the circle. They're coming to the circle for advice. They're coming to to me, say they came to me for a consultation on career advice. They want to share with me their problems in a confidential manner, how to best approach and advance in their organization or advance in their industry. Just ideas is what they want. They want that feedback, feedback that they can't get anywhere else. Maybe they want an objective third party, a fresh set of eyes a new perspective, a new mind that can help them contemplate and consider their own issues, their own problems on a personal level. Because some folks don't have friends. You understand? Some folks only have associates. I've grown... I mean, for a while at that level, um, for a while I was at that level. I didn't have any, I didn't have any friends, man. I mean, when I was really young, I had a ton of friends or so I believed. Then you get to a space in your life, a time in your life where your friends begin to drop off. They pick up interests that don't align with yours. I don't know, be it drug addiction or gang affiliation. And so your friends uh, begin to fall by the wayside, your friendships. They become less friends. They become, they move more into the category of associates, of acquaintances, maybe, of acquaintances. Because even in associates, there is a positive and a negative. I've got people who I would call the first instance I had an issue that I couldn't solve myself. And then I've got people who I would never call. Why? Because our relationship is set up in a way where if I call, I owe them. And there's just some people I don't want to owe. <laughs> there's, there's some people who would gladly do it. Do anything for me. Gladly. Anything. Don't have to pay. Just, just a handshake. Word is bond type of deal. But I would owe them. And I can't be having that. Can't be having that. How did I grow to build those relations? By making the subjective reality. By making good on my reputation. And it's only with a select number of people. Anybody else, if 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 it comes uh, if it comes down to pinning two reputations against one another, it's it's so subjective. It's hard 
it's difficult to put into context. It's it's difficult to put into context on the uh, on a field of just words. On a field of just words. I mean, there must be some kind of act, some act that validates one side or or could potentially validate both sides and be mutually beneficial that's always beautiful to see when two bold motherfuckers with reputations to match meet one another the handshake is that much more genuine that much more authentic the relationship is that much more it's on the tip of my tongue it's literally sweeter it's, it's sweet. I don't know. Like it hits that portion of my brain. It's not hedonistic. It's not narcissistic. It's pleasure. That's that's the addiction I'm on. Those are the affiliations I want to make. Not just the ones that are skin deep and paper thin. Follow us on Instagram. That's incorporating underscore associates dot IA on Patreon. Feel free to subscribe. All monies go toward the, uh, the nonprofit operation of corporate cowboys and incorporating associates paying uh, legal fees and expenses. You can shoot something directly via PayPal, paypal.me slash corporate cowboys, cash app, dollar sign corporate cowboys, and uh, Venmo that come to me directly and I could administer it. That's Alex underscore Coco. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Pour one out or pour one up for me. Have a nice week.